Hey there everyone, meteorologist Adam Claybon here with you on this Thursday as rain is set to make its way in here to western Washington. It's going to be some heavier periods and we do have some latest information. Models that may be trimming back a little bit on the amount of rain, some of the snow too to go along with that in the mountains, and the strength of the system overall meaning a little less wind. But we're going to see all of that still and it's still going to be the strongest system we have dealt with so far here this year. So let's go ahead and get into what's happening right now. The showers beginning to work their way on to the coast and we're seeing that here across more of the north coast. The south coast, well, we'll be picking that up here as we head on into the latter part of the night. And those of us near I-5 expect to see more of that by the time we head into tomorrow morning. Now, check out this long fetch of moisture. It extends all the way back towards just east of Japan. You can see the cloud coverage and it goes all the way back there. So when we talk about an atmospheric river, that's what we're talking about. The ability for systems to ride along this wave of moisture, the jet stream, and for, well, moisture to be picked up by that. And when you have a longer stretch of that, it picks up more moisture and it's able to dump it off into a very localized area in which for us, it's gonna be across more in the Pacific Northwest here as we get ready to head on into the weekend. Now, this is going to be more of a moderate atmospheric river, so shouldn't be anything too much as far as impacts. But what we're expecting is it's definitely going to bring in some rainy conditions and some snow for elevations above 6,000 feet starting tomorrow. We'll eventually get that down to around 3,000 feet around Snoqualmie Pass heading into Sunday. And again, this is probably going to be some of the heaviest rain we've seen and de dealt with so far this year. So first alert days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The good news for us is it starts to let up heading on into Monday. And also the good news is we got a lot of dry soil out there. Latest route monitor just released this morning shows all the dry soil that we have here across western Washington. And so it's going to be able to soak a lot of this up. Hopefully we won't have too much runoff. And for right now, it doesn't look we'll have to worry about any sort of big concerns when it comes to flooding or anything of that nature. As again, the soil is ready to receive this moisture. And we're going to see that move into our rivers too, which are relatively low here as we head on into this time of the year. We'll start to fill those up as we go on into the next few days. Here's our seven day forecast, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, all first alert days with really Friday and Saturday being the wettest days as we'll have the more consistent and steady rain in place at that point. Temperatures falling though over that three day stretch and still keeping some showers around even as we head on into next work week. Here's Paulsville, cloudy skies, not too much rain to speak of early into our Thursday evening, but uh, around Tacoma, it's just completely dry here. We got a lot of clouds, but a nice view of Mount Rainier off into the distance in that small break in the clouds. And our view here from our Queen Anne camera in Seattle, cloudy conditions, temperatures holding steady in the upper 50s to low 60s, and that south wind, that's going to be something that will hold temperatures up as we go throughout the night, so only expecting lows to drop down more so into the low 50s. Winds again here across the area, anywhere between about 5 to 15 miles per hour for most spots. So with this system arriving, we'll get a little more of that wind to start to come around. And this system will continue to work its way here through parts of western Washington and start to usher in a bit more of that moisture. There it is. You can see it just off of the close. Big bright band of clouds beginning to head its way across Vancouver Island and southern BC and for us here across western Washington. Now check out the winds too. You can see a sharp cutoff right there on the left side of your screen. That's where you see those winds in the purple range. That's where you get closer to about 40 miles per hour and then it goes down cl closer to about 10 or 15 right behind that. So it gets very breezy out towards the coast, maybe closer to 35, maybe 40 miles per hour. Those of us farther to the east, not as much of the wind. We're talking about generally 10 to 25, maybe closer to 30 at times. But as it heads eastward, we start to lose a little of that energy and it does weaken. So. Here we are heading into tomorrow morning at about 11 o'clock, closer to noon. And some of the strongest winds will be hitting the I-5 corridor, while farther to the west, winds will start to weaken at that point. And we'll get winds to kick up maybe just a bit more, heading into the early part of the afternoon around I-5. But then those will start to die off as we head on into tomorrow evening. That's at about 8 to 9 o'clock tomorrow night. And maybe we'll see a bit more of that wind trying to come back as we head on into Saturday, as we get a bit more of that energy to come through with another disturbance that's going to be riding along that. Now, here's again what we're expecting as far as the rainfall. We expect that to continue to come in here as we head through the night. So some lighter showers out towards the north coast with the deeper moisture coming in as we head into tomorrow morning. I'll back that up for you. Getting closer to about 7 o'clock, that'll be hitting areas here closer to Puget Sound right around that point. So this is going to make for a pretty wet commute. Heaviest rain, probably late morning commute heading into more of the late morning and early into the afternoon. 
as we see some of those pockets of oranges and yellows, that's indicating where we expect to see some heavier rainfall, some heavier downpours at times. So that, again, that window, late morning, early afternoon, probably the wettest stretch for us. Then we'll start to see the tail end of that towards the evening commute at about 6 to 7 o'clock, and then that starts to head farther to the east as we head on into tomorrow night. And then another wave comes in heading on into the morning on Saturday. You can see that spin of low pressure circulating through the area. That's the one that really helps to drop the snow levels down closer to some of our past levels around Stevens and White Pass. And eventually, as that moves farther to the east, we're going to get that down to about 3,000 feet Saturday evening, Saturday night, and into the day on Sunday, where we got another disturbance right behind that to help to produce a bit more rain. So how much are we talking about? Here it is right now, at least through more of early Sunday morning, uh, one to two inches for many spots here around western Washington. Some rain shadowing farther to the north and to the east might cut it down just a bit, but even then, we're still talking about more rain yet to come, so we could get up to an inch here around Port Townsend, Orcas Island, Bellingham. Wouldn't be surprised if we do that at all. And looking at the snow levels as they drop around that time, Saturday night into Sunday, and then maybe even Sunday into Monday, we'll keep maybe some of that snow continuing to fall. As far as the amounts that we're expecting, since it is going to be a bit higher, we do expect that the snow levels uh, will help to generate some inches uh, around Snoqualmie and Stevens Pass, but it's more around Paradise and Mount Baker, which are higher passes for us that will really start to get in on some of the heavier snowfall. As we were saying and expecting here early into the week that we were going to see some changes in the models as far as the expected snow and earlier into the week it was showing closer to a foot of snow around Stevens and Snoqualmie Pass, uh, even White Pass. You can see how that's really come back to a certain degree. I still think we can get closer to a half a foot around Stevens and White Pass, maybe even Crystal Mountain too, but Snoqualmie Pass will be between about that two to six inch range, while areas around Mount Baker and farther south around Paradise, which are higher elevated, We'll see quite a bit of snow with that. Overnight lows tonight will drop down into more of the low to mid 50s. And then your highs as we head on into the day tomorrow, we top off at 58 in Blaine. Upper 50s around Anacortes will be around the lower 60s. Getting there closer to, uh, looks like Mount Vernon. 59 in Arlington, 57 in Monroe. We'll see highs in the upper 50s around Seattle, Bainbridge Island, and Bremerton. And farther south of that, around JBLM, Puyallup, and in Eatonville, maybe getting up to 60 degrees, but generally up into the upper 50s. Here's your seven-day forecast, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, all calling for rain. Thankfully, again, things have trimmed back a little bit as far as the amounts of rain, but still expected to be one of the wettest systems we have seen so far here this season. And then more of their lighter variety of rain as we head on into the start of next work week, but still keeping things active, so we'll keep replenishing that soil with more moisture that we so desperately need. Okay, everyone, make sure to have the rain gear handy and ready to go out into your Friday morning, and have a great Thursday night. We'll talk to you soon.